All right, so these are the Unit 3 examples for Section 3.2 and 3.3. So our first example is for addition. And we're going to add 3 quarters to 2 thirds. So the first thing we must do with numbers or fractions when we're adding them is to make them have a common denominator. By doing so, we must find the lowest common multiple between the denominators and multiply each denominator by a number to get to that lowest common multiple. For example, between 4 and 3, which are our denominators in this question, we have to multiply each other by 4 by 3 and 3 by 4 to get to 12, which are the common denominators. Now there is a rule. The rule is what I do to the denominator, I have to do to the nu numerator, or what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. This concept comes from the fact that we can't just multiply randomly by any number in math. If, if we have are given two values and we have to add those two values, we need to keep the same numbers. So when we multiply on the top by, for example, with three quarters, by three and the bottom by three, we are actually multiplying by one because three divided by three is one. So that is why we can actually do this. So convert it to common denominators and we get nine over 12 and 8 over 12. So let's add those two together, 9 over 12, 8 over 12. We keep the denominator the same and add the numerators, and we get 17 over 12. Second example, subtraction. So we have to go to the same process of finding a lowest common multiple between 3 and 4, and then converting the fractions so they have the same denominator. So we have 9 over 12 minus 8 over 12. So this is equal to 9 minus 8 over 12, which is equal to 1 twelfth. Our last example here. Susie earns 29, 25 95 sorry, every Tuesday and Thursday for doing her chores. On Saturday, she goes shopping and spends 45 75 First question, how much does Susie earn in a week? Use a rational number to represent this amount. After Saturday's spending, how much money does Susie have left? Use a rational number to represent this amount. If Susie repeats this process for three weeks, will she have money left over? If so, how much? So let's examine the first question. How much does Susie earn in a week and to represent this as a rational number? So we are told in the question that on Tuesday and Thursday, she earns 25.95. Now I am going to represent these two as rational numbers, and that means to get rid of our dollar sign. So we get 25.95 and 25.95. So in a week, to find out how much she earns, we have to add these two numbers together. So we add 25.95 together and 25.95 together, and in the week we get 51.90. $51.90. And represented as a rational number, we get rid of the ra uh, the dollar signs. So $51.90 is the second part of our answer. And with word problems, we must use a sentence to answer our questions. Susie earns $51.90 in a week. This number can be represented by 51.9 or 51.90. So, next question. After Saturday's spending, how much money does Susie have left? 
use a rational number to represent this amount. So, she spent $45.75. Again, write this as a rational number. That means to get rid of the dollar sign, which is $45.75. Subtract the two, and we get $6.15. So, after one week, she earns $51.90. She spends $45.75. She has $6.15 left over. And we can write that as a rational number of 6.15. Again, we have, must write this in a sentence. Susie has $6.15 left after the weekend. This can be represented by 6.15. last part of this question. Susie earns $25.95 every Tuesday and Thursday. So same question, but we are looking at if Susie repeats this process for three weeks, will she have money left over? If so, how much? Well, if she has $6.15 left over after one weekend, that means the process is repeated three times because we are looking at three weeks. So she'll have 615 plus 615 plus 615, which equals 18.45 or $18.45. So therefore, Susie does have money left over after three weeks of repeating the same process. And she will have 18.45 left over in the end. So there are examples for section 3.2 and 3.3.